Welcome to the first deep dive on an AWS service. The first one is called IAM. So IAM stands for the Identity and Access Management. It is a global service because in IAM, we are going to create our users and assign them to group. So we've already used IAM without knowing. When we created an account, we created a root account and it's been created by default. This is the root user of our account. And the only things you should use it for is to set up your account as we'll do it right now. But then you shouldn't use that account anymore or even share it. What you should be doing instead is create users. So you will create users in IAM and one user represents one person within your organization. And the users can be grouped together if it makes sense. So let's take an example. We have an organization with six people. We have Alice, Bob, Charles, David, Edward, and Fred. So all these people are in your organization. Now, Alice, Bob, and Charles, they work together. They're all developers. So we're going to create a group called the group developers, regrouping Alice, Bob, and Charles. And it turns out that David and Edward also work together. So we're going to create an operations group. Now we have two groups within IAM. Now groups can only contain users, not other groups. So this is something very important to understand. Groups only contain users. Now some users don't have to belong to a group. For example, Fred right here is alone. He does not correspond to any group. That is not best practice, but it is something you can do in AWS. And also a user can belong to multiple groups. That means that, for example, if you know that Charles and David work together and they're part of your audit team, you can create a third group with Charles and David. And as you can see now, in this example, Charles and David are part of two different groups. So this is the possible configurations for IAM. So why do we create users and why do we create groups? Well, because we want to allow them to use our AWS accounts and to allow them to do so, we have to give them permissions. So users and groups can be assigned what's called a JSON document, I'll show you right now what it means, called a policy, an IAM policy. So it looks just like this. So you don't have to be a programmer, this is not programming, this is just describing in, I think, plain English, what a user is allowed to do or what a group and all the users within that group are allowed to do. So in this example, we can see that we allow people to use the EC2 service and do describe on it, to use the Elastic Load Balancing service and do describe on it, and to use CloudWatch. Now we'll see what EC2, Elastic Load Balancing, and CloudWatch mean, but through this JSON document that looks just like this, we are allowing our users to use some services in AWS. So these policies will help us define permissions of our users. And so in AWS, you don't allow everyone to do everything that would be catastrophic because a new user could basically launch so many services and that will cost you a lot of money or this would be a problem for security. So in AWS, you apply a principle called the least privilege principle. So you don't give more permissions than a user needs, okay? So if a user just needs access to three services, just create a permission for that user. So now we have seen an overview of IAM. Let's go in the next lecture to practice creating users and groups.